In the last video, we installed Keras, TensorFlow, and Anaconda. The point of those being to make it easier to create neural networks without having to do it from scratch every time. So in this episode, we're going to be creating one. So let's get started. I've written down a bit of code beforehand just to make it a bit easier. All this is is the imports and the data initialization. So in this example, uh, we're going to be creating the neural network that creates the output that is always equal to the first input. So you can see 0 and 1. This pair right here results in 0. 1 and 0 results in 1, and you can see the rest. So that's the data. What we need to do now is create the neural network and train it. So to start with, in Keras, there is something called a sequential model, which is what everything is going to be based off of. So we'll just create a new variable, model equals sequential, and initialize that. And all that is is an array of layers which it processes the input to produce an output. So this is sort of like the manager of all the layers. The next thing we need to do is actually add the layers. So you can see up here, we've got the sequential imported from Keras, but we also have something called dense. Dense is really just a layer. Uh, I'm not sure why exactly it's called dense. I'm sure there is a reason behind it. Model.add, so add a new layer, and I'm gonna create a dense. The first array, because there's quite a few arrays that you can use, most of them are just optional. So the first option is the size. So the first dense, we can just do something like five. It's not that important, but depends on what you're doing really. More complex networks will have more and less complex ones will have less. Okay, so the next option is the input dimensions. So you just type input underscore dim, which is input dimensions and then equals. Um, all we need is two. So you can see how we're inputting Two, which means the input dimension is 2. The next thing we need is the activation function. Uh, I've already talked about activations before. Uh, they're just the uh, graph of how it's going to be converted at the end of each neuron. What we're going to be using is the rectified linear unit. Um, and all that is, is it makes it so that if it's less than 0, it equals 0. Otherwise, it equals 1. This is also just the rectifier, so that's all you need to know. Um, and that's the first layer. That's everything you need to do for a layer. What we can do now is just copy that and actually get rid of something. Uh, we'll just remove the input dimensions because we don't need an input dimension for anything except the first layer. So at the moment we have an input layer which is said here and it's got a size of 2. Then we have our first hidden layer which has a size of 5. Then our second hidden layer which has a size of 5. And the next thing we're going to do is add an output layer. So really all we can do is copy that again and set it to 1. Um, and that will work. So that is the one output that we want, uh, either 0 or 1. And yep, so the only thing we're going to be changing other than that is the activation function. So instead of using rectified, we're going to be using sigmoid. What sigmoid is, is you've seen it before, it's the S shape, so it makes things more definitive, so closer to 1 or 0, which in our situation is good because we don't get things like 0 0.5 as often. So that is actually the whole network. The next thing we need to do is actually compile the model. So if you just do model.compile, all you need to do is set the loss. Uh, what we're going to be using is the mean squared error, or MSE. And what that is, is it basically... Uh, just squares it and or it gets the average of all the errors and then squares it and then that's the error or total loss Next thing we need is the optimizer. What we're going to be using is Atom. It's sort of just the standard for neural networks um, So yeah, we'll just keep it like that and that is the compilation and Just like that you have created a neural network So we still need to train it because it won't do anything yet, but that is the whole neural network setup So to actually train it what we need to do is do something called model.fit. Uh, the first two variables you need are the x and y, or input and output. So we'll just do x, y, and then that would fit it. We still need a few more options. So the next option we're going to do is going to be epochs. So we'll do epochs equals 1000. So it won't just run through four times for each of the inputs and outputs. It'll repeat that 1,000 times, so, so it actually definitely gets the answers. And the other thing we need is the batch size. So what the batch size is, it's how many it's training at once. So it might be training them in groups of two. Uh, so it might do 
this and this and then adjust it like that, but that can cause problems. So generally what you'll do is train it in groups of one or depending on optimization it might be a bit higher. So we'll just do batch size equals one and that is the fitting process. Okay, so now that we have that code written down, all you need to do is press F5 and run it. And you can see it'll just run through 1000 times. You can see the loss gradually getting smaller and until it's gotten down to 0 0.05 loss, which means each time, or on average, between each of the tests, it's getting 0.05% off, or 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05 actually off, not a percent. So all that means is it's pretty close. So if we want to get an actual value of what it's predicting instead of what we're getting, all you need to do is do model.predict, and then we'll just give it x, and Yep, we can just test that, so I can save and run. The loss gets smaller and smaller until it's really small. Uh, this time it's actually gone into scientific notation because it's so small. Um, and yep, so what we can do now actually is I've got to print that value we got. So you can just do print model.predict. A little shortcut in case you accidentally did what I did and forgot to execute the right line. It won't forget all of this code, it's just executed that. So what we can do is select this and press Control Enter and it'll just execute it there. So here's the results, here's what it predicted. So 0 0.03, uh, that's what it got instead of 0, which is what it was supposed to get. So it wanted 0 and got 0 0.03, which is almost exactly right. If you rounded it, it will go down to 0 rather than 1, obviously. Same with the next two, they're supposed to be 1, they're getting 0 0.98 and 0 0.99. And the next one is 0 0.02, so that should be 0, but instead it got 0 0.02. Um, that really is it. Um, so I'll just recover what we did a second ago. Uh, we imported some things, created our data set, x and y for input and output, initialized our model as a sequential, added a few layers, uh, the input layer, this hit first hidden layer, second hidden layer, and output layer. Uh, here we've just compiled it, so with loss mean squared error, so get the average and then square it for the loss. Optimizer of Adam, the standard, and we're just fitting the model after that. So input, output, repeating it a thousand times with a batch size of one. And then the last part is just printing the predicted value for x. So it, it has no access to this y value, it is just uh, based on the trained weights it's predicting it. So in that situation, it works pretty well. You can see how it got down to a really small loss. Uh, so that is everything for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.